Welcome to NPR Northampton Poetry Radio with erstwhile poet laureate Rich Michelson. Rich, thank you so much for being with us today. I'm so excited. Rich Michelson is an award-winning author and poet. I love, I love the blurb on the back of your new book, Sleeping As Fast As I Can, and Rich is here today because we want you to know about the event on Sunday at 4 o'clock at our Michelson Gallery, which we'll hear more about in just a moment. But let me share just a bit of the blurb on the back of Sleeping As Fast As I Can, a new collection of poetry by Rich Michelson. He, the blurb talks about the many collections of poetries of his that have been published and how his children's book as w- children's books as well have been on the top ten list of the New York Times and Publishers Weeklies and the New Yorker. His awards from the National Bo- uh, National Jewish Book Book Award, two Sidney Taylor Gold Medals from the Association of Jewish Libraries. Uh, but of course, we love the fact that mentioned as well is that Michelson has served as poet laureate of Northampton, Massachusetts, where he hosts a poetry radio program and owns our Michelson Gallery. There we go. Why didn't they, uh, they were supposed to put that first. I, I, not at the end of the blur, but first. So, um, yes, yeah, so I'm happy. Usually I'm here with a guest um, pushing their new book of poetry or their reading. So it's nice to be here uh, for my own book, which was uh, released yesterday. And I must say, uh, I, I've read all of your collections. I've read, I think, all of your children's books. I think this one is one of your very finest works. Well, you don't like the others. I do. What's, I lo- what's I, wrong with you? I love the others. <laughs> I do. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just telling you that this is really moving, one moving piece after the next. Thank you. Thank you so much, Bill. Well, it's been, this is my first full collection since uh, uh, 2015, actually, when I was still Poet Laureate of Northampton uh, and uh, and started uh, a spot on the Bill Newman show back then before it was Talk to Talk uh, as as what I decided to do for as Poet Laureate. We've been doing this for eight years? We've been doing this for more than eight years, wow. actually, um, because I started uh, two years before that, so ten years ago, I believe. Um, it's our anniversary. It's our happy anniversary, anniversary Rich. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm so, so happy. Do, do you have flowers for me? I'm going to go get flowers for you. <laughs> I'll go, when I go back to the gallery, I'll check. They probably haven't been delivered yet because we weren't open. But uh, I am very excited that I will be uh, celebrating this book Sunday at our Michelson Galleries, and I'm going to have a couple of guests with me. Including? Including a uh, National Book Award winner. I just... I just won the National Jewish Book Award, but the National Book Award covers everybody. Uh, my dear friend Martina Spada and Paul Mariani, who is also published by um, the same publisher as my book, Slant Books. And, uh, and both these gentlemen are beyond being uh, among the premier poets this country has ever produced. Uh, also are my dear friends. Uh, Paul was uh, the first poet who welcomed me to this area in 1979 when I moved in and decided I was going to start a gallery. Uh, My first artist was Barry Mosier, uh, and his best friend was Paul Mariani. Uh, And and Martine um, and I grew up in the same neighborhood. Yes. Did you know that before you guys met here? We did not know that before we met here. We both grew up in East New York um, in Brooklyn. And uh, it was my honor to then later follow him as Poet Laureate of Northampton, uh, where we met and found out, of course, that we used to prowl the same streets. I I love the Brooklyn connection because as uh, a number of people have said to me uh, when you've read your poetry here on the show said, it's just an amazing thing to know that someone with an accent like Rich Michelson writes those amazing words. Well, and it, and, and there's, <laughs> there's, it's, it's not self-intuitive. to It's not intuitive to people, but it really is a wonder to hear you read, which we're going to ask you to do in a minute. But uh, Martine and I used to say, you, you had two choices coming from our neighborhood. You either learn to fight or you learn to write. Those were the two <laughs> ways out. And... Uh, and I'm going to read, actually, uh, a poem 
that uh, I want to can I read a poem now? Sure, can I do that? sure. It's still my show, right? I it's, can do what yeah, I want. Absolutely, okay. absolutely. I would like to you to tell our listeners one thing before you do, which is the title, "Sleeping as Fast as I Can." Where does that come from? Um, well, there's an old um, Yiddish proverb: "Sleep faster." We need the pillows. Uh, this <laughs> book uh, is very concerned with you know since my last book. Uh, certainly, we have seen a great uptick in anti-Semitism in this country, um, and this book is very concerned with that, uh, as well as gun violence. Um, I think some of my people who know my work in general uh, know that my dad was a victim of gun violence. Uh, he in died. East New York. He, yes, he was killed um, and uh, many, many years ago. Uh, in fact, and this is a good segue into the first poem I'll read, um, Martin Espada's father uh, was a photographer. Um, a brilliant photographer. And a brilliant photographer. Uh, his work can be seen at R. Michelson Galleries. But, um, uh, but also took a lot of photographs of the old neighborhood. Um, and he actually presented me one um, of block near me. And if you go to my site, which is richardmichelson.com, M-I-C-H-E-L-S-O-N, um, we have one of the poems is read by a local actor, um, Ray Burke, uh, and, um, and we have incorporated images by Martine's father. And you can see that on the site. And the poem, and I'm going to read that poem if I can start out because we're talking about the old neighborhood. This book has a lot of uh, poems written in form. Uh, this poem is called Neighborhood Villanelle. And for those who don't know a villanelle, uh, probably the most famous one is Dylan Thomas, Do Not Go Gentle Into That Night, where you repeat the line, the last lines. You'll, you'll get a sense of it, but there's a repetition that happens. Uh, neighborhood Villanelle. In this neighborhood, you'd better learn to fight, my father says. Real schooling's from hard knocks. Books won't save your life. He knows I'd rather write and read. I don't talk back. His love is no birthright. Instead, I bluff, act tough. He teaches me to box. In this neighborhood, you'd better learn to fight, he says, or you'll be prey. Better tough Israelite than studious black hat, defenseless orthodox. Books won't save your life. I know you'd rather write. Next day was Hanukkah, the festival of lights. Hey, Jew boy, some kids jeered as if I wore earlocks. I was no Maccabee, bluff called. I could not fight. I came to, battered, bruised, but had no appetite for bloodshed or revenge. Instead, I walked for blocks, prayed books would save my life. I swore someday I'd write these lines, and now I have. We never kissed goodnight, yet every poem I wrote, he saved. The paradox? A bullet stopped his life. Lead plug, he could not fight. I escape the neighborhood with every word I write. It's mm. Rich Michelson reading from his new collection, Sleeping as Fast as I Can. There will be a uh, book launch, poetry reading, Rich and Paul Marinari and Martina Spada this Sunday, 4 o'clock at R. Michelson Gallery. We're going to take a break. And when we come back, I really want Rich to share with you a couple more of these poems. Particularly, I hope you'll share with us one called Life Sentence. We'll be right back. We continue our conversation with Rich Michelson. His new collection is titled Sleeping as Fast as I Can, the book launch and reading along with uh, Paul Marinari. 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 Thank you. And Martina Spada will be 4 o'clock this Sunday at R. Michelson Gallery in downtown Northampton on Main Street. Rich, the poems are just so wonderful, so moving, and so accessible. I wonder if you could share with us a couple more. Sure. And uh, if I can also, Sweden, I do hope that everybody will join us Sunday. If you can't, because you're up saving the river, 
um, and can't get back down in time, which is a notable uh, thing to spend your time as well. Uh, I will say that if you go to my site, um, there's a link, and I will be reading via Zoom tonight with my publisher who's in Seattle. Uh, so at 8 p.m. I will be um, reading online uh, for a little bit, and you can hear some more poems. And people can access that by going to your yeah, website? Yeah, I don't remember what the link is, but you have to register. But if you go to richardmichelson.com, again, that's M-I-C-H-E-L-S-O-N, um, there's, you'll see a link to be able to access that tonight. Let's hear, um, so, let's hear another couple of poems, um, please. So uh, during this um, writing of this book, uh, my mother um, developed dementia, and eventually died. Um, while a lot of this book is politically based and about what's going on in the world, uh, while I saw the world declining, my mother was also declining. Um, I kind of uh, saved my own sanity by writing about what was going on around me. Um, and uh, let's, uh, I'm going to read a couple of poems about my mom uh, and dedicate this uh, to her, this reading. Um, the first one I'm giving since her passing. Um, but uh, this is a poem called Life Sentence, and um, I think it speaks for itself. It's like speed dating at a mortician's convention, my mother explains. The first sentence must awe, oh, wow, or oh, shock, entertain, or risk a reader's waning attention before truth's modest list of achievements. It's only now I understand that the creative writing seminar I insisted she join at the assisted living facility, elevated to heaven, has cast her as entrepreneur and God as venture capitalist, 60 seconds to make her eternal pitch, as though even the afterlife can't improve upon our uninspired dreams of everlasting success. Enough plot or too literary, she asks, reading from her initial draft, which seems a peculiar question while composing one's obituary. But for now, she's alert and focused as she revises text, laboring her life into art, undeterred by what comes next. It's so beautiful, Rich. So, so powerful. Um, yeah, you know, it's funny how... Um, my mom lost her mind, but um, she could still uh, play a min mean game of Scrabble right until the end. She could no longer remember what the words meant, but mm. she could always put them together. Uh, so she would beat me even in the nursing home towards the end days, um, and uh, I tried to enforce a rule where you had to define the word you were putting down just to kind of save myself here, because uh, she lost that, but she did not lose her ability to make words. Um, so let's see. Uh, another poem, too? What do you want? Well, I would like to hear, I would like to hear some more of this. It's so remarkable. Let's, let's do Sweet Caroline. Okay. So um, Sweet Caroline, my, you know, it's, um, I'm sure other people have had this happen, uh, if parents who surrendered to dementia... Um, my mom was a very different person at the end. Um, in many ways, she was a happier person. Uh, she was not the same person. She had lost her edge. She had lost her mind, her intelligence. Um, but uh, she also had a difficult life. And, um, and this poem, Sweet Caroline, uh, talks about my seeing her at the very end um, in the nursing home. Um, and uh, the memory care unit. Sweet Caroline. From this distance, you could be shooing flies. But as I exit independent living to enter the memory care unit, I can see, performing his nail diamond dip shake swivel, the resident accordionist. According to Wiesenthal, evil flourishes when the good do nothing, and the evidence is everywhere. Yet from here, watching you dance to the wheeze and bellow, a choir of cafeteria aides praising your name with every chorus, I think of the arrays of the brain, our synapses endlessly reinventing us. 
Dementia is lessened by music therapy, the director mentions, which has the potential to ameliorate your mother's depression. And so I watch as you sway and clap. Your expression, unrecognizable, is, dare I say the word, sweet. Oh, Caroline, you who prized vinegar above honey, resigned to life's bitter truths, a husband's murder, an indifferent God, now finally sing. Good times never seemed so good. <laughs> Rich, I, wa I want you, before you go, I want you to share My Dying Is Not Tragic, if you would. Well, Could you do that? It's the next poem, I know. I didn't print this one out in large type, so let me see if I can actually read from the book. My dying is not tragic, my mother says. So save your petitions and poems. If any god is listening to her recitation of fanatical faith in the existence of no god, I entreat them to not misinterpret acquiescence as contentment. I will not, she mocks, resurrect in a graveyard nor haunt your waking dreams. Every second, she explains, more than 100 humans die. 600 since I said this last sentence. There will never be justice for those murdered children or their parents forever suffering unspeakable pain. I'm in her hospital room, the TV blaring another school shooting, officials offering thoughts and prayers. My dying is not tragic, my mother repeats, adding, as if awed by nature's mathematics, my heart beat its wing four billion times. She's computing pulses per minute times years. Outside her window, a hummingbird hovers. Miraculous, she whispers, as if sanctifying that word. Rich Michelson, reading from his new collection, Sleeping as Fast as I Can, the book launch reading with other very distinguished and brilliant poets will be 4 o'clock this Sunday at R. Michelson Gallery here in Northampton. Rich Michelson, congratulations. This is a brilliant, brilliant book. Thank you so much, Bill. Thank you.